In this module, I want to take a look at motion on an inclined plane. This is worth taking a moment to consider because we end up working with a lot of inclined planes in uh, this course just because it provides a uh, sandbox in which to to look at a whole bunch of different types of problems. But they bring their own particular flavor to uh, physics, dynamics, uh, uh, exercises. Okay, so I have an inclined plane. So this is resting on the ground and the incline makes an angle theta with respect to the ground and so the wedge itself forms a right triangle and so I know that the, this angle theta plus this other angle phi is also equal to 90 degrees. And so we've been studying one-dimensional uh, constant acceleration motion and so let's ask the question whether this is a one-dimensional problem. I mean if I graph here my positive x and positive y axes relative to the uh, uh, gravity, the motion seems to be going in two dimensions. But the answer is this is a one-dimensional problem if we choose the right coordinate system. And the right coordinate system is not, in fact, this one. The right coordinate system should be along the angle of the incline. And so this is sort of the first lesson of motion on an inclined plane. That's very important. If motion is constrained in some way, and here it is, this incline constrains the motion of this particle to be along uh, this slope. So if the motion is constrained, uh, to move on a line, choose the axis along that line. And, you know, there, there may be exceptions, but this is certainly the, the right way to start. So again, the how you put your coordinates systems is a choice. If you do all the physics correctly, you will still get the right answer by choosing this coordinate system. However, all coordinate systems are not created equal when it comes to the simplicity in which you can solve the problem. And so in most cases where motion is constrained in one dimension, you want your axis to be along that line. Okay. So, in motion of an inclined plane, what is the acceleration of that object? And it turns out that the ex that acceleration, and to to derive this, we have we have to get into forces and and uh, other things in a later unit. But we're we're going to to just jump to the answer because we want to play with it when we're just studying motion in kinematics. The acceleration, which is a vector, has a magnitude and a direction. And the magnitude of the acceleration is the projection of the free fall acceleration vector along line of the incline. So that's the magnitude. Now I know that's a bit cumbersome, but, but I wanted to get exactly what we mean in words instead of just putting some symbol or some equation, because it's the words that are important and the mathematical representation might be different depending on the example that we're using. Okay, so the magnitude is the projection of the free fall acceleration vector along the line of the incline, and, and we're going to look at what that means. The direction in this case is much simpler, and that's down the incline. All right, so let's calculate the magnitude, the projection of the free fall acceleration vector along the line of the incline. Now, to do that, I need to uh, calculate a coordinate system that has the free fall acceleration in it, 
as well as a coordinate system for my incline itself. And so I'm going to do something that, that uh, you should pay close attention to that will be very useful in incline problems. So my schematic that I'm going to draw, I'm going to give myself I'm going to give lots of space here. I might even want more space than this, but we'll start with this. So this is now a coordinate system that's parallel and perpendicular to the ground. And this is useful because I know, since it's parallel and perpendicular to the ground, that my free fall acceleration, I'll call free fall, is equal to uh, sort of negative g in, in this direction whatever I want to call this. I didn't, I didn't call it anything yet, but I'll give, not do it a vector. The magnitude of the acceleration freefall is, uh, is ne oh, negative g2. Well, okay. So this is the vector for the acceleration freefall. Its magnitude is g, and it's pointing in this direction. So that's why I want this coordinate system. Now I'm going to draw another coordinate system that's perpen parallel and perpendicular along the line of my incline. So if I do that, oh, this is the shallow angle. There's the, line, the axis parallel to the incline. And then now I need an axis perpendicular. And so this set of axis is parallel and perpendicular to incline. I cannot tell you how useful this system is when dealing with incline problems. Now, the next thing to do is to be able to relate these angles. There's only two angles here, theta and phi. And so let's find where is theta here in this picture. Well, that that's here, right? That's this angle right here is the angle between the ground and the horizontal. It's the angle between the line parallel to the ground and the line parallel to the incline. Well, because these axes, my blue and uh, yellow axes, let's give myself, let me get this blue again, and this one yellow. My yellow and blue axes are all uh, perpendicular to each other. And so if, if this is theta, that means this is theta, which means this is theta, and this is theta. Well, because the blue is a right angle here, that means theta and this angle have to be 90 degrees. Well, we know what angle added to theta gives us 90 degrees, and that's phi, this angle of our original wedge. So this angle is phi, this angle is phi, and this angle is phi. So my, my axis is getting kind of cluttered here, lots of angles and lines, and most of that is just to show you how these angles, if I were to draw this again, I might not include all of those. But this gives me how all the different axes are related to each other. Okay, so now I get to the point of what I wanted to calculate, which is the projection of the free fall acceleration vector along the line of the incline. So how do we do a, a projection? Okay, so first we have the free fall acceleration vector, that's here. To do a projection, I start at the tip of the acceleration vector and draw a line that's perpendicular to the line on which I want the projection. The line on which I want the projection is the line of the incline. That's this line right here, that's the line that would go along this incline. So this is the line along the incline. I draw a line from the tip of the acceleration vector to that line such that it makes a right angle with that line. Now the projection is simply the length from the tail of the vector 
to where the line meets. So this here now is the projection. Let's say that this is the projection of the acceleration on this line. So now I need to calculate what that is. Okay. Well, the magnitude of the free fall acceleration is g. So that means the length of this triangle, though the, the length of that vector, which corresponds to the magnitude, is g. And so I know that this angle right here is phi. So using trigonometry, I know that this projection here, which I'll call, I'll just call A, it's the magnitude of my acceleration along the incline, is equal to the magnitude of the free fall acceleration G times cosine of this angle phi. So that useful information. Now, because of the, if I look at this right triangle, I know that this angle is phi. I know that this angle here has to be theta. And how do I know that? Because of this red triangle is a right triangle. And so these two angles have to equal 90. So this angle is theta. So that gives me another expression of which to write this length that length is also equal to g sine theta. So here's the problem. A lot of books, when they're dealing with this, will have an equation somewhere in the text that has a is equal to g sine theta. And the problem with that is, depending on your coordinate system, depending on what angles you have, that may or may not be right. The way you calculate the, the acceleration is given here, and then you have to be able to translate that to a mathematical representation for your system. So if, well, let's go down here. If I have this triangle, and this angle happens to be 30 degrees, and I'm given that, then I'd want to know, okay, A is equal to G sine 30 degrees. But what if I'm not given that angle? What if I'm given this angle? And what if that angle is called theta? If all I have is this equation, and I plug this angle in for theta, I'm going to get the wrong answer. And so I have to be very aware of where these expressions come from. So if, so in this case, if I use this angle, I need to use this expression here, or I can use this angle to calculate what this angle is and use g sine theta. This a is g sine theta only applies for theta between the line parallel to the ground and parallel to the incline. And so part of this exercise is to is to uh, is to first <laughs> how to deal with incline coordinate systems. Those sorts of pictures is very important. Also, to not just take equations for granted, to make sure that you always know where those equations come from. And finally, I am going to have to 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 be honest with you in one way, which is if I were to go to an actual real physicist who has not been looking at uh, freshman physics for a while and say, remember a block sliding down an incline, what is the acceleration of that block along the incline? And if they haven't looked at this for a while, they may not remember that far back. But I can tell you exactly how they would solve this problem. They would say, well, let's see, it has to be the projection, which means and if I have, let's give myself this angle here. I'm given this angle, theta. That means it has to be either cosine theta or A is sine theta. And if I look at what happens when theta goes to zero, well, it's G, right? G cosine theta or G sine theta. If I look as theta goes to zero, this goes to G and this goes to zero. So I know 
that the answer has to be this. Looking at limiting cases, theta goes to zero, is essentially the first thing that a, uh, a physicist would do to look at this sort of problem. And so keep that in mind and also use that as a check to make sure that you're using the right sort of expressions. Is it sine or is it cosine? Look at the limiting case and see whether it, it leads you to the right answer.